can use existing Python modules, but you can also create your own module if you want to. Here, I'm not going to explain every possible thing about module creation, just the basics to get you started. And I'm going to go back to the add to ints.py that we have written previously. Here we have a function to add two numbers. Let's say now I want to use that function in a different file. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy and paste this function every time I need to use it, which is really not convenient. So I'm going to create a new file here, new Python file, and I'm going to name it my computations. Uh, dot py, which is going to be the name of the module, okay, my computations. I'm going to take the function here, put it in my computations.py, and well, that is simply the module for now, which contains a file name and then one function. And so in this module, you can add as many functions as you want. Make sure you don't add a code like this, okay? code that is going to run when you call uh, the file, okay? So just add functions, don't write any other code, just functions. And now let's go back to the add to ints.py. I'm going to remove that function, okay? And so you can see now we have an error because add to numbers is not recognized. What I'm going to do, I'm going to do import my computation. And I'm going to do here, my computations dot add to numbers. So as you can see, when you import a built-in module or your own module, that's exactly the same thing. And a module is nothing else, so a very simple module is nothing else than just a Python file with some functions in it. So here, import my computations, and then I do my computations dot add to numbers, which is the function here, and I can use the function. If I just want to import the function, I can do from my computations, import, add to numbers, just like we did with the OS module. And now I can just use the add to numbers without providing the name of the module before that. And this way, so if you add many more functions here and you just want to use the add to numbers, you are just going to import the add to numbers function. All right, and one last thing is make sure to provide a meaningful name, okay, for your module. So here, as a test, I just put my in front, okay, my computations. Make sure to use a meaningful name, which clearly states what this module is about. For now, you have just run your Python programs directly from the PyCharm IDE here with the play button. But what does it do exactly? So I'm going to do run, I'm going to run the add to its here. So add to its, okay. And it's going to ask us number one, so I'm going to give you two, and then number two, three, two plus three is equal to five, okay. But actually the comment, so the first line, what this is. So you can see we have a long stuff, and at the end, python.exe. So basically, this is going to run the Python executable, with another file, okay, with another name, which is basically the file name. So as you can see with the complete path for the add to ints Python file that we have here. So Python add to ints.py. This is the command that gets executed in the terminal. So when you click on play here in PyCharm, basically the program is executed just like you would execute it in the terminal. And this can be very useful to know how to run your Python program from the terminal so you can be more independent. You can then write your code from any text editor or IDE, like for example in PyCharm, and then run the program on its own. That's great if you just want to run an existing program without having to start the entire IDE. Okay, here you need to start PyCharm and then click on play just to run a very simple program. So let's see how to run a Python program from the terminal. I'm going to show you first for Windows and then for Linux and macOS. Note that the terminal is usually more used on Linux and macOS by developers, where basically that's the default way to control and navigate on your computer. On Windows, using the terminal is maybe less common, but can still be very useful. And note here that the commands I'm going to use are the same on Linux and macOS, 
but are different on Windows. And let's get started on Windows. So what you can do on Windows is simply so press the Windows key or just go to the bottom of the screen and just type CMD or command prompt or terminal or whatever. And you just click here. And this is going to open a terminal. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Okay. And you can see that by default, you are in your home directory. So slash users slash uh, your name or your username. To see what you get in there, you can use the dir command. So dir is going to give you all the uh, files and folders that you have in your directory. Here you can see we have PyCharm project. If you want to go to that uh, PyCharm project, you simply do cd py, and you can use tab for auto completion, cd PyCharm project. You can do dir another time, and you can see you have my first project, which is what we are using here. So cd my first project, and then dir another time, and you can see we have all the Python files that we have here on the IDE. So that's the same thing. And now let's say I want to run the add to ints.py. I'm going to do Python. So the Python command simply and then add to int. I can use tab another time. And this is going to run the script. And yet, as you can see here, enter number one, enter number two, and we have the result. And so this is going to execute the uh, Python program the exact same way you are going to execute it when you press play on the PyCharm ID. And now let's see how to do that on Linux and Mac OS. So the instructions here are going to be the same for Linux and Mac OS. Okay, so you have PyCharm with your programs and etc. You can open a terminal. Okay, so open a terminal also on Mac OS on your applications, utilities, and terminal. On Linux, well, on um, Ubuntu, for example, you can directly put the terminal here or search uh, here for terminal. And then, well, you are going to need to find uh, this uh, file here. We want to launch add to it. Okay, so you can see here, the project is actually on that directory. So home, PyCharm project, my first project. And we are actually in the home folder. Okay, if you do pwd, you are in your home folder. So ls, you can see I have PyCharm project, and then cd PyCharm project, ls, I have my first project, cd my first project, ls to list the files, I have my add to inst.py, I can just do Python 3, so make sure you have Python 3, you can do Python 3 version to check that you have Python 3 correctly installed with a good version and Python 3 add to inst.py, I press enter and it's working. So enter number one, let's say four, number two is two, four plus two is equal to six, that's working. And for Mac OS, the commands are also ls and cd and Python 3. Okay, that's going to be the same command. Congratulations, you can now create Python programs and run them from the terminal. In the rest of the course, I'm going to come back to the PyCharm IDE and run the programs from there. But on your side, you can decide instead to just run the programs from the terminal. That's going to be the same. And here are the exercises for the level four of this course. So I'm going to give you here two exercises. The first one, you're going to compute the max value inside a list of numbers that you read from a file. So the thing is that computing the max value uh, from a list of numbers, you actually have done that before and you have a function for that. So what you can do is you can use the function you have created before and actually put it inside a Python module. Okay, so we already have the my computations module. You can put this function in that module and then use it in your code. And also one thing to pay attention to is the data type you are going to get when you read from a file. This is a string, so make sure to cast it accordingly. And the second exercise is to read a list of cities from a file, order them alphabetically, and write them to another file. So here you can download the city list, okay, as an additional resource of the course. So download the list, put it 
somewhere in your computer and then use either the relative or the absolute path, what I'm going to do is simply to put the file in the same directory as the Python file I'm going to write the code into. And to sort the list alphabetically, well, you don't need to invent, well, you don't need to invent a complex algorithm or write a lot of lines of code. You can simply use the built-in sorted function, which simply takes one parameter, which is the list you want to sort. And this is going to return the sorted list. All right, so take the time to do the exercises. If needed, come back to the previous lessons and watch them again. And then I will see you in the next lesson for the solution. This is the solution of the two previous exercises. And so let's start with the first one. I'm going to create a new file, so new Python file actually. Let's name it compute average from list and say from file to make it different from the previous one. So first I'm going to need to read a list of numbers from a file. Let's use the file test. So we have six numbers here and I'm going to compute the average uh, from those. So we're going to start with, so the with keyword, open, and then file test. Okay, I use the relative path, R, because we want to read from the file, and then as F, okay, and I'm going to do for line in F, okay, and I'm going to put each number that I get from each line, okay, inside a new list that I'm going to create here, number list, so an empty list, and here I am going to do number list dot append to add a new element to that list, line dot rs trip without the backslash character here. The thing is that this is going to add a string, okay, to the list. What I want is to add a number. So I could cast it to an integer, okay, or float number, as you want. I'm going to cast it to a float like this. So this is going to add a float number in the number list. And then, after this, I have, actually, I have my uh, number list with all the numbers here. So let's print actually number list. And what I'm going to do now is to compute the average. So to compute the average, I'm going to go back to that uh, file here, compute list average. And instead of just copying this function uh, inside that file, I'm simply going to, com to uh, copy this function inside the my computations module. Okay, I add the function here. So now I have two functions in my module, and then in this file, where I want to compute the average, I'm going to add a new line at the top, which is from my computations import compute list average. And as you can see here also, when it's gray on PyCharm, it means that you are not using uh, the import, okay? And it's going to turn into a different color when you start to use it. And I'm going to do print compute list average, so still using the auto completion from the number list. So I don't need to write the function again here. I don't need to copy it. I just need to import it from the module. And now if I run this, so run with compute average from list in file, you can see we have the list here with the six values and then the average right after that. Okay, and this is the solution for the exercise number two. So I have created here a list that you are going to be able to download, unordered series.txt. So for once, I have added an extension, okay? So you can add an extension or not, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so 10 cities, 10 random cities that are not sorted alphabetically, as you can see. So I'm going to create a new Python file. Let's say sort cities. Uh, okay, so I'm going to read first all the cities here and put them in a list. So city list is an empty list. I'm going to do with open unordered cities, so I can use the auto completion here, with 
R because we want to read okay, from the file as F. And I'm going to do four line in F. So as you can see, that's always the same structure, okay? CD list dot append, and then I'm going to do line dot strip backslash n. So again, that's always the same thing here. And now, so this is a string. I add it to a list which contain strings. So the data type is correct. And now I'm going to sort the list. I'm going to create a new list named sorted city list is equal to and then sorted function with the city list. This is going to return the sorted version of that list. And I put that in a new variable or a new list here, sorted city list. Okay, if you want, you can also print uh, the intermediate result to see uh, how is it working. And I'm going to create a new file or just to write to a new file that new list I have created here. So with open, I'm going to create a file named ordered cities.txt. Okay, and I'm going to use w for write, okay, as f. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put each uh, cities, okay, from this new list. Okay, in a different line. So I'm going to do for city in sorted city, uh, sorted city list. Okay, so make sure you do a for loop on that list and not that list, otherwise you are not going to change uh, the order in the file. So for each city I have, I'm going to write it in a new line. So I'm going to do f dot write city. And if I do that, it's just going to add all the cities together in the same line. So I'm going to do plus, quotes, quotes, and backslash n to add a new line character. This way I can write each element from this array, from this list, on a new line. Okay, and that's also a very common structure you are going to use uh, many times. And well, that's it. I'm simply going to do print down okay so it's always nice to have a down or okay at the end of a python script so you can know when this is uh, finished okay and now run sort cities you can see down and well you can see on the left we have so we have unordered cities here and we have ordered cities okay this is a new text file which also contains 10 cities but this time alphabetically ordered.